Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to you all on this International Women's Day 2023. My name is Lisa Carney, and I'm going to be your host today for our IPAD online webinar. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you who are taking the time to join us here this afternoon. And also just to remind you that this webinar will be recorded and is available on our IPAB website. And of course, can be available for myself and the presenter, Joanne, as well. International Women's Day is a day of celebration. And it is about acknowledging our achievements and looking back proudly at how far we have come. International Women's Day is just that as well. It's international and it's celebrated on the same day globally, bringing together women across all sectors of the world. It is also a day for reflection and awareness, to reflect on how brave, courageous, resilient and strong all of us wonderful women are. But it's also a day of awareness to be aware of the injustices and the challenges that we still feel and are presented with on a daily basis. Today, our presentation is about staying safe online and at work. And it will be presented by one of our own super women, our current senior vice president, and soon to be the Institute's 52nd president, our very own Joanne Lavelle. Joanne's presentation is extremely important and very relevant, not only to all of us working in the industry, but also to life in general. Just a little bit about Joanne. Joanne is an award-winning independent valuer, auctioneer and estate agent operating as Michael Lavella's estate agents, a family business in the Northeast. Joanne has been working in the property industry for about 20 years in County Lau, where her team offers many services across all sectors, including sales, lettings and valuations. Her approach to selling marries the traditional tried and tested methods of negotiating property with a strong use of modern marketing technology through multiple channels. As a result, she's very, very aware of the need to be safe, whether she is working on site or online. In today's presentation by Joanne, she will be reminding you of the many practices which we as property professionals have been using and relying upon for years, as well as proposing some new elements that we should bring into our working habits. Just also to say to you before Joanne be begins, if you have any questions or indeed any points that you would like to raise, please drop them in to the Q&A and hopefully we will have time to address these at the end. So I would like to give a very warm welcome to our very own, as I said, superwoman, and indeed she is, I know her quite well, Joanne Lavelle. Joanne, you're very welcome and thank you so much for giving your time. Oh, wow. thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you've summed up International Women's Day and you've way exceeded the story on me. So <laughs> well done on one. And thanks a million. On I think the other. I'm only at the tip of the iceberg with you, Joanne. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, thank you all of you so much for joining today. It's such an important um, event. And I, and I speak about International Women's Day, not speaking exclusively to women, because it's for everybody. We we'll say all genders. Um, and it's really important that. Um, that people see that there's something to learn out of International Women's Day, whether you're an advocate of International Women's Day or whether you're new to it. So I'm always really glad when IPAV is happy to, to run an event which celebrates International Women's Day. And on that point, thanks a million to our colleagues in the office for helping us to run this today. Um, I'm going to get stuck in with the slides. Before I do, um, the, the theme for International Women's Day 2023 is equity um, as much as equality. And these slides speak very much to that because we want to be able to work in a workplace where we have the same considerations as everybody else and not having to think about things that other people don't have to. And so this is where we really came up with the solution of talking this year about safety. And particularly since now, with the, you know, we all work so much online. It's really about making sure that we are respecting our personal space and our boundaries and our right to work equally safely as everybody else. So if you'll permit me, I'm gonna move on to the slides here. I'm going to give me a little moment whilst I share this out. Here we are. Right. A little bit of planning around here. Here we are. 
So International Women's Day 2023 with the Institute, safety first, sales later, folks. It might seem like an obvious thing to say, or perhaps it's a new concept, but it is a really important point for all of us. Okay, so I'm aiming to get through these slides in about a half an hour or so, and then we'll have time for some questions, as Lisa said, and get you all finished before lunch, before lunchtime is over. What this presentation is not is an important place to start. It's not gender specific, as I've already mentioned, and it's also, it's not a self-defense lesson. It's not about, you know, you know, assuming terrible situations, because ultimately not all people are bad, but also not all people are good. And in the majority of times when we are out during our work, we are engaging with the majority person type, which is harmless individuals getting on with their own story and seeking to achieve their own objectives. And are, we're there to facilitate them. So this is really just about what you're going to see today is a lot of uh, points which are going to remind you about things that many of us have been doing for years. And it's almost like naturally what we do. But what's the harm in refreshing our memory on some of those things and then some new things? So the objective here is to set up your team insulation, as I call it, your company attitude, your personal protocol and your online boundaries, particularly concerning personal safety. Here's the thing, we're all busy getting on with our work, we're doing a great job, we're enjoying ourselves, and it's important that we don't let anything get in the way of doing that. And I think that if you take away anything from today, it's that, get on with enjoying your work and keep enjoying it for heaven's sake. So what is personal safety for property professionals? And I'm conscious in saying that as well, that not everybody on here is a property professional because we have invited, anybody has, has an interest in this topic, but I'm going to, you know, from time to time, talk about property professionals because there's specific things that I really want to remind you as my property colleagues about when you're out and about. So the first thing is within your team. So that's back in your offices, organizational commitments to team safety. And that's what I'm calling your team insulation so that everybody knows where everybody is, when they're due going or due back and who they're seeing. And that might seem either like an obvious thing or a tall order, but it's important that there is always at least one person in everybody's office um, that is doing that. And if you're watching this and you're a one person band, it's still important that you have made sure that there's a record of where you are, what you're doing, where you're going and who you're meeting. So it's really so that if a question is raised, the answer is there very easily, whether it's on a, a diary sitting on a desk, whether it's on a Google calendar somewhere, whether it's on a C or M software package, whatever the way that you schedule your day, make sure that you record what you're doing. So easy. And I sometimes have to stop myself having this habit of, oh, I'll just pop along to somewhere on my way to work, or I'll just do a little call on my way home. And maybe you're calling to a property or you're checking it. You need to document where you are and where you're going. So that brings us on to offsite preparedness. And this is where we really always need to be on the always on mode um, and aware of our surroundings and our personal space. And this is the personal protection protocol. And then thirdly, online personal awareness. Now, some of you will know, I do a lot of work online for promoting not only my brand, but also my clients' properties. And so for my work, online marketing through social media channels and what have you is really important. In fact, it's now unavoidable. So I have to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it with a healthy perspective and in a way that's protecting me personally. So we'll go back into each individual section. The first area, safety means proper teamwork and a company policy or a company attitude really that stands to support your personal safety. So everyone in a team should know where colleagues are all of the time. And as I say, if you're a one person show, just make sure that you do have awareness either with family, if you're working late where you are or with your schedule so that people know if they need to find you, if, you, if, if they can't get in contact with you, where have you been? And um, I've been speaking with quite a few property professionals um, as I've been preparing for this. And some people spoke about a buddy system, which I think is really good, particularly for after hours viewings or appraisals or valuations. So it's a buddy system for checking in. And as I say, especially for evening appointments when the office obviously is closed, also for weekend appointments when the office is closed. And having an alert protocol 
if a reasonable amount of time has lapsed and somebody was out of viewing and they haven't come back yet. So maybe they've headed off to Starbucks for a, a massive coffee or maybe something else is going on that they've been detained. And so somebody in your organization needs to have a little sort of radar, a little mindfulness of that. Where is that person? OK, maybe they're due on to another call. Always know. And I always think this is very important. A viewer shouldn't be able, when I say a viewer, by the way, I mean somebody looking to view a property. A viewer shouldn't be able to dictate what colleague covers a viewing. OK, so, for example, somebody can't call my office and say, I want to see this property and I want Joanne to show it to me because it's not for somebody external to my organization to dictate the diary for my office for that day. So I would, if you're in the habit of accommodating that kind of thing, unless there's an extenuating circumstance that there is already an arrangement in place, I would avoid allowing a prospective purchaser or a tenant to dictate who covers what viewing. And just a little thing that somebody else mentioned to me, which I thought was really useful, that you could have code words that if somebody's at a viewing and they call back to the office and they use the code word, then perhaps what that triggers is the office to phone that person back to say, Joanne, you're late for your call, you have to go. And if Joanne is in the house, they can say, oh, I'm so sorry, the office has just phoned, I've got to go. So little escape strategies all of the time. The next thing that the, 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 the team, the office needs to have is data. OK, so getting the name, the mobile, the email of whoever's coming to a viewing. And I don't think that there should be any excuses for that, even where some of you are thinking, well, if I'm doing an open viewing, well, even still, you know, maybe an open viewing isn't one agent on their own. And maybe there's more of a team on, on the ground and maybe it's not such a difficulty. But I do believe that we all need to have names, mobiles and emails of anybody that we're potentially doing business with. And here's the reason. It gives accountability. The person that's coming to a viewing knows that there's more people than just them and me during the viewing knowing that they're there. So it's accountability and it's traceability and it's a psychological thing. And I think that anyway, you're going to want that person's details in case they fall in love with the house and they want to make an offer. On it. And as regards the company situation, safety before sales. I think it's a very fair comment to make. And employees knowing that their boss or manager or line manager will back them up if they come into a problem and they need to talk about it and find a solution around it. And in the office, some of you may need to check the personal safety in the office, particularly if, for example, there's somebody working on their own in an isolated situation, maybe at nighttime. Some offices have buzz in. Uh, many, many offices have CCTV. Don't forget if you have CCTV, by the way, you do need to have that sign up to say you're recording CCTV. That's really important if you have CCTV. That's a GDPR thing. And um, some people have a by appointment notice up so that, you know, strangers, random people can't just walk in all the time that they know they have to make an appointment. And then that speaks back to the accountability piece. Um, and it also helps you with your data accuracy. And I mean, data is so important from our work, not only for protecting people's data, but also so that we know um, that we can get in touch with people to do business with them. So the next piece is the offsite personal protection protocol. Most of the things that I have listed here, many of you are hopefully nodding your head saying, yeah, I know that, I do that, I'm used to that, we make sure that happens because these are mostly really, really obvious, obvious, sensible things. Um, and most of them have actually been taught um, in courses relating to property since, since the hills were shorter. You know, these are long standing, sensible things. We've just added a few modern elements. And of course, we want to just refresh your, your mental muscle about using these things. And also, if you have new colleagues coming into the office, into the team, it's no harm to remind them about these things because. I mentioned a couple of these things to younger people in the, in the profession, and they were things that really weren't on their radar. So these are important things. So we start with your car. If, for example, pardon me, you have driven um, in a car or a vehicle of some sort to a property. Always make sure that your car is charged or fueled. Seems obvious, but say you're in an electric car and you get there and you run out of charge. OK, well, apart from the obvious problem of how you're going to get home. And you just need for your own safety to make sure that you always have charge or fuel in your car. Personally, when I pull up to a house or property, I always park in such a way 
that I'm, I'm reversed back in and then I'm, my nose of my car is pointed out towards the gate so that I don't have to manage my way around it if I need to just hop in the car. If I've decided that this viewing is not for me and there's some kind of a conflict going on that I can just head out the gate and I don't need to start messing around, reversing around. And also it helps so that you're not getting blocked in. If, you know, sometimes you could be doing an open viewing and a lot of cars turn up and you might get blocked in. So you're going to get there first. Get there and park in the way that suits you most of all. When we often, personal experience, get out of the car, we have a lot of things. There might be keys, phone, other keys, other things, um, a notebook, a folder. You could be burdened down with a load of things. Don't be worrying about all of that stuff. Keep to a minimum your most agile and easy to, to navigate around situations when you have very little to handle. And also, put your, car, put your personal possessions in the boot of your car, which we should be doing anyway, even if we're just going into the shop. Because what you don't want to do, personal protection extends to somebody walking down the street outside the property you're selling, seeing a handbag in a car, breaking a window and stealing your handbag. OK, so that's going to ruin your viewing and going to ruin your day. And um, so if you're stepping out of your car and even if you think viewing is just going to take 10 minutes, that's the time when somebody might go and break into your car. So keep this easy for yourself and put your stuff away in the boot of your car. And always take your car keys with you. Might seem obvious again, but always have your car keys with you. As regards your phone, it's important that we always have our phones charged. Now, I could be going to multiple viewings one after another, and I'll be using my Google Maps to search for the property through its air code or whatever way that I'm searching for it, which depletes our phone memory, our phone battery, sorry, very, very quickly. So I always have a phone charger in my phone to make sure that when I'm using Google Maps or whatever other app it is, that it's constantly charging. Um, and again, that goes back to making sure that your car is always charged and fueled. But these are simple things um, because you don't want to turn up at, at a house and not have a telephone if your phone has phone battery has died. Um, check the coverage just to see if, you, if you're able to make a call and know your phone's shortcut for 999 calls if you absolutely have that situation, panic calls and safe code words. You do need to have your phone charged and working all of the time, okay? And activate Find My Phone. I know that's an iPhone thing, but um, there, there will be other, whatever they're called for Androids, which I don't have. Find My Phone and tell your office who has access to your Find My Phone. Because if they can't locate you and they're going to see where you last were on your phone, they want to know who can help them to access that. So whilst I'm not suggesting you give a colleague all of the access to your iPhone, you could nonetheless let them know who has access to your Find My Phone. And finally, on arrival at a property, I now, and particularly since COVID, because COVID actually taught us some really good tricks with regard to dealing with property, ask the clients to have all of the lights on. I would never have thought of doing that beforehand. But remember with that COVID situation, we had protocols and you weren't allowed to touch the light switches and the lights had to be on and the doors had to be open. That actually made our lives, my life so much easier. So Thanks, COVID. I'm taking that one and I'm putting it in the bag and I'm keeping it, right? That's it. I'm using that now. If it's particularly in winter time, ask the clients to have all of the lights on so that you're arriving at a well-lit, um, well-seen house and that's of interest, that's of safety to you. And let's face it, it's better than people arriving behind you and you're grappling around trying to put lights on and so on. So have all the lights on. If you're arriving to a dark, empty house, arrive early get the place lit up. Maybe the property is vacant, nobody living in it. So arrive a minute or two early to get the place lit up. And don't be distracted by the phone whilst you're opening up. You know what I mean? You're there and you're at the door and you're fiddling with the keys and there's somebody behind you saying, hi, I'm Sally, I'm here for the viewing. And you're like, your attention is on at least three or four different things there. The phone, person behind you, unlocking the door, getting the lights on. You just need to get there, get in safely. And I usually, if people are arriving behind me, right on my heels, I say to them, can you give me a moment to get set up? And that just lets me get in, get my lights on, get myself steady and ready to go. And um, if it doesn't feel safe when you get to a property, stay in your car. You don't really need to get out of that car if you're not going to be safe out there. So stay in your car, check the situation again, you can check back with the office, assess it see what's going on and revert back to the office and let them know what's happening. 
And if you really feel that you're not in a safe situation getting out of that car, then just make your excuses through the phone and off you go. It's very, very rarely that that would happen, but this is just all things considered. Next thing is on arrival to continue on with that theme. And this extends to appraisals, it extends to inspections, viewings, valuations. Many of you will be doing many of those things. So whatever reason, whatever the reason for your visit, the same rules apply. Confirm when you get there that the occupant, the person who answers the door, is the person you're scheduled to meet, okay? Um, because what you don't want is that somebody else is there and there's no accountability and there's no connection or purpose between you and that person. So always make sure that you're meeting the right person when you get to the property. And if they had to ask somebody to stand in in their place, if you feel that you need to call them and check them, fine. Or if they give you proper, you know, valid explanation, then that's fine. But make sure that you're dealing with the right people. Don't enter if completely the wrong person answers the door. And I will go so far as to say, and this might seem a little bit lurid, but if the occupant is in any way undressed, and I don't mean somebody opening the door standing naked. I simply mean, if you are going to have a business conversation with somebody, you expect them to have their clothes on. That means even having a shirt on, okay? Uh, answering the door in pajamas and dressing gown is not a way for you to go about your business. You're there as a property professional. And with the greatest of respect, we are entitled to turn up and be treated that we're there for business and professional business purposes. You know, you could get into a situation where you turn up and everybody's out in the back garden having a barbecue and there's a great big scene going on. That's not really the situation for any of us as property people to arrive into. So make sure that um, whoever answers the door and is in control of the situation is appropriately presented to you, is not under the influence and isn't angry. You know, is there is there an underlying problem that you weren't aware of and that you perhaps shouldn't be part of? Um, so make sure that you're on steady ground as you go into this property. Also, if you turn up at the house and the only occupant in the property is a child, then I argue that you don't go into the property. OK, so when I say a child, I mean somebody under 16. Even if the person there is the child and mom or dad are in bed asleep. That to me is a reason to say that you're going to reschedule for when a grown up or an adult is available, because you there are so many movable parts to an engagement with an underage person that can be just not in your favor, that it's best to just reschedule and just take the hit on the time wasted and the petrol wasted and go away and reschedule that. Be prepared also to simply drop everything if you run into a real conflict situation, accept your phones and keys, jump into the car and head off. Doesn't matter if you, if you drop your notebook, who cares, off you go. So personal protection protocol for viewings. The first thing is, if they're not on the list, they shouldn't be getting in. As I said before, you're creating accountability, mutual accountability between, yes, your name is Michael, this is your contact details, you're meeting Joanne, you're creating accountability between the two people. When you get into a house, close the front door during the viewing, because otherwise you're leaving the door open. And I heard the IFA gave a very good example once, an open farm gate is an open invitation. Well, it's exactly the same as a house. An open door is an open invitation for somebody who's wandering past to just go in. You never know. I heard of a colleague once a few years ago, she came into the house, she put her handbag down just inside the front door and she left the door open and she started doing the viewing. And the house was a terraced house on the street. And of course, when she came back, the handbag was gone. The keys of the car were gone. The phone was gone. What are you going to do with that? Okay, so even that as a simple level is an example of how you can just box clever, come in, close the front door after you and keep the house key with you because you're in control. The key holder is the control person. I have a personal practice when I go into a property is that I never lead the way into a room or up the stairs, okay? You invite other people to go into the room before you. You invite other people to go up the stairs and that way you're still the one closest to the door, okay? And avoid side negotiations. Now I've so many times had this over the years. Say you've got a busy viewing, there's a lot of people around and everybody wants to talk to the agent and everybody wants to get the quiet little conversation and what about the bids and I wanna make a bid and this is my situation. I would argue that when you have a busy situation like this, if you're on your own, bids require your full attention. 
So you should schedule a call or a meeting with that person or invite them into your office to have a meeting when you can give it your full attention. Because if you're, if you're giving it your full attention as an open viewing, then you're not giving your attention to everything else that can be going on there. And um, even protecting your client's property. So I always say, let's talk about this when we are able to speak directly one-to-one. And when departing a property, if again, it's nighttime and it's dark, if you need to leave a light on to safely reach your car, so be it. And if that means that your client says you left the front doors, the front step light on, and you know the price of electricity and the light was left on, well, that's tough, but that's your safety and you needed to have that light to get back to the car. So, you know, it's okay to look after your own personal safety and to do so unapologetically. Next is beware of your space. And I have to tell you a very bizarre situation that we found ourselves in recently. I was telling Lisa about it before we start. Fake gunshots and smoke. Might sound like something out of a film, but we went to a property recently and the garage had an unusual safety mechanism that when you open the door, it triggered the sound of a gunshot, very realistic sound, and also released the smell of gunpowder. So you open the garage door, there's this big whoosh of air, you hear a gunshot, there's the smell, and all you can think is, I've been shot, where am I shot? I mean, it's, it's a fairly extreme security system. To me, it's not wise. But these kinds of things exist. And if they are activated in a house that you're doing a viewing on, that is entirely inappropriate. And your client needs to turn that nonsense off. Whatever security system they want to have in their own space, that's fine. But when they know you're coming to the house, they need to deactivate it. I now have a clause in my letter of engagement to state that my clients have to deactivate all security systems that are, that are you know, hazardous when I'm calling to the property so that they can read it and be reminded of it. And as many of you know, have heard me talking about regulation for a long time in IPAV um, CPD over the years, you have to make sure that your clients read your letter of engagement. So that's the kind of ideal place to remind them about that kind of thing. The next thing is animals, dogs, cats, snakes, and livestock. As uh, some of you will have said, will be nodding your head saying, yeah, I've had some strange animal stuff when I've turned up at properties, including snakes. So it's up to the client to ensure your safety on their property. Okay, I'll say that again. It's up to the client to ensure your safety on their property. And that includes if there are safety enclosures for animals to make sure that they're enclosed and removal of animals for viewings, say, for example, if they have dogs who bite, cats who bite, snakes who bite, uh, dogs that bark a lot. Because here's the thing, I don't mind dogs, a person who's coming to a viewing with me could be petrified of dogs. And that completely, it actually damages the viewing experience because the person is too busy worrying about the dog than paying attention to the house that you want them to buy. So it's in nobody's interest if the, if the animals, particularly if they're yappy or if they're big and barky and bitey, um, they shouldn't be part of your viewing experience. And again, you can remind them about this in the letter of engagement. Also, if you, for example, are showing property that has land, I would be saying, just keeping an eye on my time here, um, it's probably not a good idea unless you've got loads of time, it's a lovely sunny day, um, to walk the land, um, particularly if you're not sure about your own space. And when I'm talking about your own space, many of you will know what I mean by that, where you just feel that um, somebody is paying attention, not to the property, but to you in a way that's either inappropriate or uncomfortable or just not useful, okay? So um, if they're more interested in you than in the property, that's basically the thing that we're talking about here. So you can let them walk land themselves if your client is happy to do for that to happen and obviously create boundaries around that and make sure, making sure that they understand if there's livestock on the land. Next is online awareness personally and professionally. Pardon me. Why do we tell people so much about ourselves online? Okay. We tell them what is our local pub, our local favorite walks. We take photos in our home. We do FaceTime live at home. Okay. We're really merging our, our professional selves with our personal selves when we start to do that. And it's too much. In many cases, it's you're giving away too much of your own personal information and your own personal space. And I advocate these days that you don't 
create that merger between your professional online self and your personal online self. I really think now that we've come out of COVID and some people got very good at finding out a lot of things about people during lockdown because we're all stuck inside for so long, it's time to take our online selves a little or maybe a lot more seriously and put our own safety first. It's a really noisy space, folks. There's so many channels. There's so many things to see, to do, to buy, to enjoy, to hate on, to love on. It's The space is so cluttered now. And sometimes as property people and property marketers, we're trying to reach as many of these spaces as we can. Um, and sometimes in trying to do that, we may be overshare. Here's the question. Are we fair game if we promote ourselves online? Okay. Uh, no, we're not fair game. The internet is a marketplace or a constant conversation, just like newspapers or magazines. And um, we are entitled to promote our work, promote our clients' properties, promote things online. Don't let this stuff stop you. If your content is appropriate and relevant, then you work away, but don't compromise your own safety for the sake of getting a sale or the sake of getting a new subscriber, okay? And as we definitely found, I certainly found it, that particularly through COVID, trolls and keyboard warriors might be a million miles away. And most of those people are fairly harmless, um, but their comments can be hurtful. They can damage your confidence and your brand. And if I go back to one of my very first slides, it was this, do what you do, enjoy what you do and keep doing that, okay? Repeat, repeat, enjoy your work. So don't let this stuff stop you. Here's the thing, there's a lot of stuff now we're being told if we're going to do marketing, we have to do features video. Videos here, we must do videos of everything. So all these lives, these reels, these shorts, um, if you're doing work with social media, you've got to provide all of these different pieces of content. And let me tell you, it can be hard to find all the content all of the time. And you've got to now, instead of just going to a house to take photographs, you've got to take photographs. You've got to do viewing, virtual viewing. You've got to do a FaceTime live. You've got to do shorts, reels, a whole lot of things. Here is my advice for doing it in a way that respects your personal boundaries. Don't do it in your own home if it's not on your social media personal spaces. Check your surroundings before you begin. Because for example, we've all seen, I mean, you see it mostly on holidays, don't you? When you're out at the beach and there's somebody who's doing like an influencer thing and they're saying, look what I'm wearing or look at the holiday, the hotel that I'm staying in. But they're not really paying attention to their surroundings, you know, and it's not beyond the realms of possibility that whilst you're distracted talking to your phone, somebody else is doing something else. Like maybe, stealing your camera bag or something else. So always be aware of your surroundings and check your surroundings before you begin doing your videos. Don't be distracted. Somebody gave me very good advice recently. Do your live when you're leaving or record it and schedule it as a check-in. Because you know when you think about it, I was doing this thing where I was turning up to a house to say, I'm here at this house to do a viewing and I'm going to be here for the next hour and I'm clearly on my own. Okay, so that wasn't really a very sensible approach to it. You turn it around and you do it when you're leaving. And even at a very simple level, you could be recording a house or taking photographs and you could catch an, a sort of an innocent bystander, a stranger in your clip, and they could get really angry about that. And that's okay. You know, people, some people are very, you know, anxious about recording. So don't incur the wrath of a stranger in your clip because avoiding simple old fashioned anger is part of your personal safety. And then sadly, when is it not okay? And when does this stuff turn to a situation where you have to really start to pay attention to it? So it could be an inaccurate an unfair or an unjustified Google review. It could be an unsubstantiated complaint. And um, it could be YouTube comments. It could be Facebook comments. It could be Instagram, simple, horrible nastiness, okay? And for those of you who have received those kind of comments, you'll probably be shaking your head saying, yeah, I know what that's about. And yeah, what can you do about that? Okay. Sometimes these words are false. They're personal, they're deceitful, and they're insightful. And sometimes they're just weird. Weird, not such a problem. But when people are asking or putting up comments that are false and unpleasant, that's not fair. And um, when behavior escalates suddenly, and for the very, very tiny minority of people, here and generally using social media and marketing tools like this, behaviors can change and that's important to note as well. And when online communication becomes real time. 
These are when you really need to take action, okay? Know your boundaries, when to step in or step away. If somebody's paying you too much attention or saying unpleasant things about you, stop, block that person, okay? Again, it goes back to your personal profile overlapping with or merging with your online social media space and the need to review your historic online content to see what they're, what, what they're going from. I find that noise is actually the easiest solution to this. So either you, you, you shout back on social media, that's not a fair comment, that's not accurate. Um, please don't leave a comment like that again. Um, or if somebody is shouting at you out of viewing, put your hand on the car horn and you shout at people to leave you alone. Because bystanders will always turn around and pay attention to noise like that. Um, and if there's an individual specifically, you need to know what was the history of the communication with that person. Remembering that not all channels date specific posts. So for example, if somebody puts up a Google review about you, um, Google won't date when that review went up. So they might say it was up three months ago, or they might say it was up a year ago. So that's a bit too vague if you're trying to keep a schedule of communication with somebody. So you need in real time to note when something odd has happened on your social media channels. Is there a pattern of communication? Is it all Facebook posts? Is it all YouTube posts? And um, has it escalated? You need to talk to your colleagues about that or talk to other people who use those channels as well. If anybody here watching this has ever wondered about some weird messages over social media and they don't know who they should talk to, I'm perfectly happy for you to phone me, by the way. If you don't know who to bounce questions off, call me. And if I haven't heard of this kind of scenario, I'll fairly quickly form an opinion about it, okay? So if you're not sure about something, ask around. And, you know, we also, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you might need to check with the, with the local guard, the station for advice to see if there's something specifically that you need to do or that you need to change. And here's all of the stuff that we can do. We can block, we can have, we can put signposts up to say CCTV in operation. We can, I mean, if, if I get one message from somebody on one of my channels and the message is inappropriate, that person is immediately blocked, okay? And they're blocked off all channels so that even if they were just following on Facebook, they're blocked off everything, okay? Blocked off my phone, everything gone so that that person would have to go to a huge effort to contact me after all that blocking, okay? So in all, really, all of those comments, what they're doing is they're either reminding you of things that you have been doing and that you need to remember how important they are. You need to be reminding your colleagues how important they are. I know it's great to say it now. It's the, what, the 8th of March and the evenings are getting a little bit longer, but we are still, you know, we still have worked late and we work on our own often in this business. So we need to look after ourselves. Set your own rules online and offline and decide on a course of action for uninvited or unwanted attention. For me, it is immediate, unapologetic blocking. Okay. Nobody has an opportunity to come back and you don't even want to have a conversation with those people. And employers need to support staff if they, if they come up and say, something's happened, I felt uncomfortable about this, what should I do about it, okay? So from today, make this what you did today. Know that your team supports you when you're out and about and values your safety. Employers know that a valued team member is a longer term employee. Know your team is paying attention to what's going on with the diary and with properties. And I liked this, I think it might've been DNG, who have this buddy system, I like that a lot. And insist, you should insist if you have it, that it's active. And I'm guessing, somebody can stand, can correct me, but I'm guessing it means that if, for example, Sarah or John are doing a viewing at seven o'clock at night, then at half past seven, they check in with a colleague from the office, maybe a quick text to say, I'm finished, all done, all okay. Okay. If you were going home on your own at night from the pub, you check in with a friend. Why should it be any different if you're coming home late from work? So it's really simple. It's not alarmist. It's not odd. It's a simple reality. And have an agreed protocol for action. Um, recently, similar situation happened to me. And it was actually my colleagues saying to me, you need to take action about this because other people need to know that they should also take action about this if something happens that they didn't want to happen. So record all of these things and report it whether within your team or to your client or higher up uh, if needs be. So again, from today, let's share all this information, our knowledge, share amongst each other, 
If you have a buddy system, if you're one person band, make sure that somebody else knows or that you can you can talk to and um, share your experiences and let's learn our lessons from this because it's such a minority topic and yet it's such an important topic and it's relevant for any gender and whether you're in property or not in property, apologies to the non-property people, it'll have been very property specific there, but I think worthwhile comments all the same. Um, so I hope that you, Lisa, did you get anything out of that? <laughs> Absolutely, Joanne. I have to thank you for that uh, really, really informative uh, presentation. And it really, um, I suppose, made me more aware of um, how to keep myself safe at work. I, you know, we all get so caught up and so busy that uh, sometimes we forget to actually stop and check, you know, as you said, and is this safe for me? And if you have a feeling that it's not safe for you, stay in the car. There is no sale worth risking your life or, or you know, and there's nothing worth that. Um, and as I said, you brought some really, really uh, good and valid points there. Um, look, our job is not considered a dangerous job, but certainly we put ourselves into uncontrolled situations where you're at open viewings, you're at late viewings, you're showing people around vacant properties, um, you know, and all of those can, can leave us vulnerable. Um, and I guess it's just to take that step back um, and just to be aware of your surroundings, where you're going, um, and just to be conscious of that every single time you leave the office. Um, some some points that you really that I, that I, I picked up on was the buddy system. I also think that's a fantastic idea um, mm -hmm. and a really clever idea. And I think it should be brought into every office um, whereby and even if it's you're leaving that appointment and it's late that you even if you you don't even have to t call your buddy a text, a code word, as you said, um, mm -hmm. be it whatever it is done, sale, you know, iPad, use whatever code word you want to say I'm safe. I've left the building and I'm on my way home. But I think that's a really, really, really um, valid piece of information from today. And even, and even Lisa, if you think about, it, you know, I mean, if, if you're at a date, if you're going out on a first date yeah. or a blind date, everybody yeah. has a cold call. You know, you text, give me a call so that you, you know, you get out of the date if you're not bothered, if you're not interested. It's exactly the same situation. I think it was Brian Dempsey in DNG who told me about the buddy system. But yeah, I mean, as I say, even if you're adding a date, you have somebody who you want to call you to you can get out the door. So it's it's not this isn't Absolutely. first first run stuff. Absolutely. And it goes without saying that's across the board for men and women or whoever, whatever gender, you know what I mean? That it is you have that system in place and it gives you that that, I suppose, sense of uh, look, somebody's got my back. Should I need it? Yeah. You know, and that you can go out a bit more confident to those viewings. Um, also, I guess the open viewings. And, and that was very important, too, that if you're at an open viewing, it's happened to me so many times. You're there. Somebody walks up and you say, look, have you registered your, you know, with the office that you're coming to this open viewing? I haven't, but I'm just passing. I'm really interested. No agent, I think, there on the ground and on that spot is going to say, well, sorry, you're going to have to come back another day because <laughs> we're not built like that. We're no. built to get the people in and let them view. So that, I suppose, is something to be very conscious of as well. And maybe perhaps before even letting them in, get their details off them. If they're not yeah. willing, we'll say, then look, even use your insurance or whatever. Say, I cannot let you onto the property until you give me your full details. Always yeah. have some excuse, but certainly do not let them in. Um, if you and again, it's just going back to your gut feeling, as you said. If you feel unsafe, don't do it. You know, yeah. just do not do that. Yeah, I'll be honest. Um, what I have done from time to time when that has happened is, I've asked them dial this number from your phone, and it phones the office or it phones a colleague, and give them your name, and, and they have your number, and then they're accountable because their phone has made connection with another person, so another third party knows that they're there, and that covers you. That's that's absolutely. a little degree of safety. And as you say, that can take just seconds, yeah. but you have that security and you have somebody, you know, sh accountable for that. Um, another very good point uh, that I, I picked up as well that you said, the more remote viewings, don't be doing the more remote viewings on your own out at seven, eight o'clock at night uh, when yeah. it's dark. If it is a remote place or a remote viewing or an inspection or an appraisal, pencil it in for during the day. If that client cannot make that, well, then that's a conversation you're going to have to have with yourself. Um, you know, as to why they can't make it until eight o'clock at night. And if they can't, and if it's for a genuine reason, bring a buddy with you, bring your colleague with you. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that that goes without saying. Um, the number one thing that really hit me as well is stay in the car. If you don't feel safe, stay where it is secure, and that would be in your car. Um, just a point that came in there uh, on our Q&A as well, Joanne, if I may as well. Actually, one was a very good point that came in as well from a Tracy and she says perhaps 
not advertising a listing as vacant when you put up that listing on, on social media or on uh, our usual um, web platforms. And also don't advertise that the house where an open viewing is taking place is vacant. Mm. You know, so that's probably a good point to take on board for, for some people as well. Um, and Joanne, if I may, another question just in from Gillian, just on it. Should employers have a safety policy set up or is it enough to highlight uh, it with your staff and to go through it um, and refresh every month? As you said earlier on, not so much a policy, but a plan and a strategy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this it should it shouldn't become a burden for for employers and employees to be to be conscious of this stuff, but that they have a plan in place. Uh, for one thing, that if a number of staff walks into them and says something something has happened to me, that they immediately know how to spring into action and be responsive and and serious, take it seriously. That's the big thing. Um, a lot of offices already have things like CCTV in place and so on. And other offices already have, you know, protocols there. And um, everybody has to put together their own. Um, it's down to where, whether your office is in a busy place as well. The people as well who are independent contractors, they need to know. Like, I'll give you a really good example. I sent a painter to a house, a rented property, and there seems to be this problem that the paint, painting was never being done. And the tenant kept complaining that the painting was never being completed. And the, the painter kept coming and going and leaving. So when I actually asked the painter about it, and he's a big guy, he said, every time I go, after about an hour, a load of guys come in and start drinking. And I don't feel safe. And he just, he said yes. he felt embarrassed to admit that he didn't feel safe. But he absolutely did the right thing to just pack up his stuff and leave. Um, and so this stuff even extends not just to us, but to our contractors, because we have a certain obligation to them to uh, certainly for that guy was straight away. Well, you absolutely did the right thing. And nobody should ever have to tolerate working in an environment where there's messing going on. Um, but that guy didn't feel like he could say anything. So let that be a thing. Make sure that everybody feels they can say and didn't feel safe. Absolutely. Just another one in, Joanne. Should you take the step of verifying the mobile number given to you to ensure it's a real number of the person you were due to meet? Well, again, I say to you, we're not necessarily always either built like that or have the time for that. You know, you have to hope that it's the right number. And, you know, like when somebody's coming to see a property with us, they're in the, the CRM. But, you know, we send them an email and we send them a, a text to make sure that they are reminded about the viewing. Um, but I don't know that we necessarily know if that text comes back, you know, bounces back. And um, you look again, this is 0.001%. And if we went and verified all numbers for that 0.001%, it might not get any work done. And um, I sure. suppose really it's if you have a suite of things that the, a person who is not a nice person is going to get the message long before that this isn't going to work out for them. Absolutely, absolutely. And just one more has popped in as well. Should employees be given the option of having a tracking device in their car or in their wallet stroke handbag? Uh, I'm absolutely no expert on tracking devices. We all have a tracking device yes. anyway, okay? <clears throat> Um, so I think that your find my phone is probably the easiest answer to that. And again, just even things like on a lot of phones, and I'm embarrassed to say I can't even remember, but phones have a panic button app that you can download, that you can just make noise. Um, and that that certainly noise, that can be the difference between feeling like you did something and feeling like a like 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 a you, you froze. Do you know what I mean? That you just make noise of some sort, banging on the car horn, whatever it is. So we already, already have tracking devices. Um, I'll just add as well. Uh, thanks a million. I see thanks from Jerry and Lorraine and John. Hi, John from Chicago. How are you? Uh, thank you very much. Um, and Katie, um, if possible, move your car. Exactly. Move your car closer to your office and car spaces because it's even going from the office to the car, which I think is a really good idea. And Steph there said one benefit is application applicant management platform. All phone numbers and photo IDs are verified. Wow. That's really yep. good element there, you know. That's, that's very interesting. Yes, and thank yeah. you so much for that, Katie. That's absolutely brilliant. Great idea. Um, and I know Lorraine Mulligan. She's she's very focused on safety as well in her office too. And um, so thanks for your good comments there. And thanks, Jerry, who's our IPAV president at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I'm delighted and that some people got something out of that. 
Absolutely, and it was a fantastic presentation. You see even there from John uh, Letourneau that uh, they have um, the, the, the website there as well for the Beverly Carter Foundation, uh, which is all safety protocols as well. But absolutely, you no, know, Joanne, I can't thank you enough. That was an absolutely fantastic presentation. I think we all got uh, an awful lot out of that. Um, I think we've covered all our questions as well. Is there anything you would like to say to wrap up? Listen, just thank you so much because you, you were hosting today. I really appreciate it. And um, and uh, you gave us a great perspective on this for International Women's Day. And look, it's 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 a positive day for me uh, and an opportunity once again to just highlight important things. So thanks all of you for coming along. Absolutely. Um, and just to say to everybody as well, that's the end of our event today. Thank you so much again to our wonderful superwoman, uh, Joanne Lovell and to uh, our wonderful team in IPAD, Genevieve and Valerie, um, who always do such an exceptional job for us. And again, to all of you who have taken the time to attend our event, um, we thank you so much. Um, I'm going to leave you with a very favourite quote of mine from Elise Portugal, and uh, where she says, I am proud of the woman I am today because I went through one hell of a time to become her. So I wish you Lovely. all a very, very happy and safe International Women's Day from all of us in IPAD, from Joanna, myself and all the team. Thank you all again. Have a wonderful day and slow on. Thank you. Bye-bye.